Okay, so my rig of choice for the vast majority of my fishing is a rig called the Multi Rig. Um, it's not a new rig, it's been around for quite a few years now. I think it was originally developed by a guy called Mike Kavanagh and it was made famous or better known to anglers by Johnny Mac, often known as the Johnny Mac Rig. So I've used the Multi Rig almost exclusively for the past six or seven years now and I've used it right across the UK and across Europe as well and it's caught me lots of really nice carp. So there are several reasons why I love the multi-rig. First of all, it's extremely versatile. It's a rig that can be used in a variety of situations, whether you're loading it in a boat or a spoon, whether you're dropping it from a boat, whether you're casting it, or whether you're lowering it in the edge, doesn't matter. It works in all those situations. So yeah, there are several advantages to the multi-rig. Uh, first of all, and importantly for me, because I hate tying rigs, it's really easy to tie. Uh, another advantage, which is related to that, is that once I've tied it, I don't actually have to keep re-tying it. As long as the hook link remains undamaged, I can just change the hook. Now I use skin link, which has got a really robust coating on it, and that coating very rarely gets damaged or breaks. So I can get several fish, several casts, several situations at the same hook link, just by changing the hook when I need to. So tying the multi-rig couldn't be simpler. It's uh, simply a case of taking your chosen length of hook link and tying an overhand knot in each end. Now the knot at one end will be used for attaching the hook link to the swivel. At the other end, the length of that overhand knot that you tie will dictate how high the pop-up sits off the bottom. In the spring, I like to use it with a pop-up fish quite high, especially as a single, um, pretty much like a stiff hinge rig. As it gets later in the year, or as I'm fishing over bait, I'll make it a little bit shorter, so the pop-up sits close to the deck, rather like a Ronnie rig. Just below the loop that I've tied for the hook, I'll break the coat in using a stripping tool. Now that break adds movement to the rig, allows the hook to spin and turn freely. Just below the break, I'll tie a granny lot. Now, that might seem unconventional. Um, it's not a knot that we use in fishing quite a lot, but when I'm using a 25 pound braided hook link, a granny knot in the hook link isn't weakening it significantly. The reason for that knot is it gives me something to seat my putty on. Now, you can seat the putty on the coating that you've stripped, but for me, I like a bit of extra security, especially if I'm casting at range, to know that that putty won't slip down the hook link. Now, some people would like to balance it, but I tend not to. I prefer to have it slightly overweighted because I don't want the rig wafting around when the fish are feeding. In some situations, when I'm fishing crayfish infested waters, I'll swap that bit of putty for a split shot. There are two patterns of hook that I will use on my multi-rig. First of all is a chod twister. Now that's one that I've used extensively over the last few years. Really good hook, reliable and super sharp. The second is a chod claw, which is a new pattern to the range. The main difference between our claw hook and the chod claw is that it now features an outturned eye, which makes it suitable for fishing stiff rigs, chod rigs, or indeed on my multi-rig. I like the chod claw because it's got a beak point. Now that beak point can be an advantage when you're fishing barbless hooks, or if you find yourself suffering from the odd hook pull. I tend to use quite a big hook on my multi-rig, usually somewhere between a size four and a six. Now that depends really on the size of fish that I'm looking to catch. You know, if I'm fishing for really big fish, I'll opt for a four. If I'm fishing for smaller carp, I'll opt for a six. It doesn't really change down to the hook bait size. Um, I like to use quite a small hook bait if I can, somewhere between 12 and 15 millimetres. But that hook bait can vary greatly. You know, one of the advantages of the multi-rig is that the versatility allows you to fish lots and lots of different hook baits depending on the situation. So I could be fishing anything from a match to hatch pop-up to a bright citrus pop-up to a tiger nut to a, a boilie on the bottom. You know, again, another advantage of the multi-rig is it's not just a pop-up rig. If I find myself in a situation where I don't think a pop-up's the right way to go, then I can very easily just take my pop-up off the bait screw and mount a bottom bait instead. The rig equally effective as a bottom bait as it is a pop-up rig. So my method of choice for mounting my hook bait on a rig is a bait screw. Now the bait screw is extremely versatile again, it allows me to mount lots of different baits really, really easily. One thing you may notice is a little bit different about my multi-rig to other multi-rigs is that it's got a ball bead on the shank of the hook. Now that ball bead helps to maintain the shape of the D section on the back of the hook. It stops it pulling back to the eye, whether you're casting or, or dropping it in. 
At the other end of my hook link, the second large overhand loop is for attaching my hook link to the lead setup. Now, you can use any setup that you feel confident with, but personally, I prefer to use an inline drop-off setup. Again, it's a very versatile lead setup. I can use it whether I'm casting, whether I'm dropping it, whether I'm lowering it in the edge. It's anti-tangle and it's extremely effective and it's safe. So for me, the multi-rig is the ultimate take anywhere rig. It's super versatile. I can change the hook really easily. I can swap my hook baits over and it's caught me loads of really nice carp.